Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Dr. Scientist Heisenberg. All right, so this is the Heisenberg Molecular Overdrive from Dr. Scientist. This is an overdrive pedal, as you probably have already put together. Uh, first off, to acknowledge the missing knob, that's not how it was uh, given to me, but the knob that was on there was damaged, and so I just pulled it off for the video. Three effective gain stages here, an op-amp gain stage, an MPN BJT transistor gain stage, and a FET, an actual MOSFET gain stage. We have volume and gain control. The treble control obviously is here, minus the knob. I got this pedal, or I wanted to get this pedal for the channel because it uses some unique clipping diode things. Um, we're going to talk about it more in a second, uh, but that's really what makes this um, overdrive unique is it has this new technology that they're calling um, molecular junctions. They're essentially a very thin wafer of carbon that acts like a diode. And the way they sold it to pedal builders is a anti-parallel setup. So it's like two back-to-back -back diodes like you'd find for any type of symmetric clipping application. So let's have a look at that technology first. So we'll set the pedal aside for a second. So I was hunting around looking for information uh, on this technology and I came across this slideshow which was put together by, I, I'm not sure if it was put together by Dr. Scientist or if it was put together by the people involved here. Uh, actually, I guess we could start there. So the creator of this technology, um, which they, it's from a company called Nanolog Audio Devices, Audio Inc. This is sort of their data sheet slash information sheet here. Um, there's a picture of some of the newer versions. I should mention first off that Nanolog appears to be defunct. It doesn't seem like they're in business anymore. Their website doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be that these devices are available anywhere. They used to be available from Small Bear according to Nanolog uh, for small orders or you could contact them directly for larger orders, but it appears to be that's not the case anymore. These devices were developed by uh, these two people here, Richard McCreary and Adam Berg. Adam Berggren, Adam Berggren, Richard McCreary, Adam Berggren. Uh, Adam was the PhD senior research officer at NRC's Nanotechnology Research Center. I'm not sure what NRC stands for, sorry. Uh, and Rick was professor of chemistry at University of Alberta. They are both associated with the, oh, okay, here's NRC, Nanotechnology Research Center. And there's another company, uh, this here, the National Institute for Nanotechnology. Uh, so this is NINT, and you'll see this printed on the pedal here. NINT molecular clipping overdrive, as well as on the actual modules, which we'll run a look at in a second. So let's just go through this slideshow here. Um, so this appears to be an early prototype of the molecular overdrive to Heisenberg that we're going to look, take a look at in a second. You'll notice an extra row of knobs. Um, so here is this build, this is the prototype. And what's unique here is that you have unique clipping diode options for each of the three stages. So instead of just uh, having a single gain stage selection where you're choosing between the FET, the MP, and the op amp, and using the uh, molecular junction, the nanotechnology for each one. You can choose between different clipping options for each stage, and then co control the gain of each independently, the volume, and probably some global gain control. There's the initial uh, inside of the prototype, and these here are the actual molecular junctions. Uh, they call them, what is, the, what is their name? They just call them nanolog devices, NDs. Yeah, nanolog device. This is the original prototype, and you can see sort of the design of the, how they're just demonstrating what the actual thing looks like. So it's uh, some sort of very small piece of carbon, a couple strings of carbon molecules put together here, and then a layer of copper. Looks like a function generator, guitar string, and then some Fourier transforms uh, of the fundamental, the noise distortion when you put it through the uh, distortion or the clipping these uh, nanolog devices, you get all this harmonic content, which is what clipping is. Um, here's some common or some comparisons between using the nanolog device, the molecular junction, as clipping diodes in the feedback loop of an op amp, as opposed to using like silicon, like an anti-parallel setup of silicon diodes. That is the black line here. I'm sorry, my printer only does black and white. Uh, the here is the this line here is the analog device and this line here I'm not, I'm not sure if they're trying to show that this is in the feedback loop and maybe this is like a hard clipping setup i'm not sure what the difference is between these two but essentially you can see it is performing like a diode and it's an anti-parallel setup so you have uh your negative current and your positive current with respect to zero here's clipping as a function of like um time where you have your essentially sine wave coming in 400 hertz sine wave here is clipping with standard silicon diodes, and then here's the clipping waveform with the, 
the molecular junction. Here's some more Fourier transforms. You have the fun fundamental 400 hertz frequency and then a little bit of harmonics. And then you have standard clipping diodes, which create a relatively smoothly decreasing amount of harmonics here versus the molecular junction, which tapers off more steeply. And so the, the second order harmonic, which is usually the one that sounds pleasing to our ears, it's louder relative to some of these higher order harmonics, which I'm supposing that they probably will claim sounds more musical and better. Uh, and here's just a suggestion of how you might hook this up where you have the analog device as one option, you have just a, a resistive load uh, on this option and then the standard clipping diodes as an overdrive setup. Uh, and what this is supposed to show is just for this section where it's the molecular junction, how much more dynamic it is. You still are preserving some of these waveforms, which is gonna be primarily from the higher voltage, forward voltage, but that's what, that's what they're trying to show is more dynamics. And this is just a bit from the production where they're creating a bunch of these molecular junctions on a single wafer, breaking those up into the individual little packets, a little like SIM card packets. You can see here where the junctions are and this is like the carbon piece in between. There it is integrated into the pedal, which I already looked at over to essentially an early version of this pedal here. And then it gives some more links. I'm gonna put links to all these, all these documents in the description. So if you wanna read more or look more closely at these, look for a link in the description. Uh, and then we'll just have a quick look at this. So this is sort of like the info sheet for these devices. You can see this is a later version where they actually put it on a little like PCB and they just have the junction here sitting under a blob of epoxy. They also made different versions and N1 and 2 and N3 and they had different forward voltages N3 being the highest forward voltage. Looks like they also had an M1A version. I'm not sure if there maybe there wasn't an N1, but yeah, here they're showing forward voltage curves the N1 being shorter or, or a, a lower forward voltage than like a standard silicon clipping diode and two and N3 are much higher. There are some restraints when using these. Apparently you're not supposed to subject the analog device to any DC current or excuse me, DC bias, like DC voltage. They haven't been tested in circuits higher than, well actually they've only been tested in circuits using nine volt DC power input. So not necessarily higher or lower. It does say the DC voltages and AC voltages are tolerated up to several volts. Circuit design should assume and test only AC voltages in the audio frequency range. Uh, and then it gives some more, the, here's the name of that person again, Adam Berggren, uh, Nanolog Audio. And then some suggested uh, test circuits or, or um, trial circuits for the devices. And then some, just some more like electrical specs and whatnot. Like I said, unfortunately these devices don't seem to be available anymore. So even, even if you wanted to test with them, it doesn't seem like you really get them. But I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So I think that's enough about the info device. Let's go ahead and look at the actual pedal. We already looked a little bit at the layout here. We've got our three gains for each of the three gain stages, op amp, MPN, and MOSFET. We select between those three gain stages with the little three, uh, three position switch here. Volume control is Fairly straightforward, probably just at the out, right at the output, just volume control and treble is probably gonna be uh, just like a simple capacitive roll off treble circuit. Enclosure here is a 1590BB size, appears to be like a dark gray powder coat. Got the Dr. Scientist logo on the bottom. Input and output jacks on top with the nine volt DC jack, it's the non-switching type. No nine volt battery inside. Here is the business end. So first off, obviously you'll notice that it has a acrylic backing. These ones were made by thetonegod.com doesn't appear that they make these anymore. You can also see, hopefully, that there are a couple holes drilled through the acrylic to give you access to the trim pots inside. It might be a bit hard to see, but right there in the middle, there's a little LED poking up from the bottom of the PCB, with the idea being that you can light up the acrylic when you turn the pedal on. It makes the acrylic on the edge glow, which is sort of like your indicator light to tell you that the pedal is active. And of course, you have the lights on top that show you which uh, which gain, which pedal essentially you're using. Single pull, single throw, momentary switch here, which implies probably relay switching. And then of course we see there, there's a relay. Let me actually pull this back door off so it'll be easier to look inside here. All right, so here's the inside of the Heisberg. So first off, I guess I should acknowledge Heisenberg is named after Dr. Heisenberg, who was a very important uh, scientist in the quantum physics world. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to have a good grasp of quantum physics. It's very complicated, obviously. Um, but Heisenberg was most famous for the 
the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which is essentially says that we can't ever know exactly the position and momentum of a particle. The closer we get to knowing one, the, the less certain we are about the other. That's probably the extent to which I understand the uncertainty principle. Um, but if you're interested, go check out what's called like the slit experiment. And it, it's, it's interesting if you're curious about those sort of things. It's sort of the rules that govern our entire world, but it is complicated. So it is what it is. I'm, I'm doing guitar pedals, okay? Let's, we'll leave quantum physics out of it for the most part. First off, a bunch of stuff written there. We already covered that. DrScientist.ca, all this stuff is made in Canada, uh, which explains the association between Dr. Scientist and the uh, different organizations that developed this technology. University of Alberta, the National Institute of Nanotechnology are all in Canada. So they, they're all working together pretty closely to, to put this together. It's interesting that this technology developed first for guitar pedals on the consumer side. Uh, my guess is that it really was a passion project of these two creator people here, uh, Mr. McCreary and Mr. Berggren, who do appear to be musicians, or at least um, Adam is here. It definitely seems like taking your work home with you and uh, bringing it into your passions, which is cool. Uh, it's unfortunate that it appears to have not worked out really. So yeah, down here are the analog devices. And you can see here uh, that no, your eyes don't deceive you. Those are in fact being held or, or applied in SIM card uh, cases. And that, that was just how they did it. They have a sort of like a epoxy, res, resin epoxy substrate that has the actual molecular junction embedded onto it. And then it's just surface mount soldered onto the actual PCB here. Uh, like we saw in the dock here, they moved over to doing the this style where it's actually on like a PCB. But this is the original versions were like this in a little SIM card. I don't know if you can actually get these out of here. There's definitely not clearance on the PCB to remove them. I don't. It, I don't think it would be removable. Uh, they had different versions, so the, I, the the concept of removing them could be there, but these don't look removable. Uh, and then you can see on top, they have the NINT logo, which is the, the National Institute of Nanotechnology. So this was created November of 2015. RC there is the doctor scientist. What's his name? Uh, Mr. Ryan Clark. As far as components, otherwise we have WEMA box film caps, the uh, resistors are all metal film, quarter watt, probably Zycon. The foot switch is the SCI brand, mo the uh, momentary foot switch. And we have our relay here, which appears to be one of the Panasonic relays, I think. Yeah, Panasonic relay, dual double pull, double throw relay. So you're switching the input and output. And the microcontroller here is an, uh, it's an AT Tiny 13A, it looks like. Yeah, AT Tiny 13A microcontroller, five volt regulator for that. And that's just going to interpret the switching of the foot switch here to turn the relays on and off. The ICs here, these two are any 5532 dual op amps. Uh, one is presumably for the op amp gain stage. The other one is probably buffering. Oh no, my mistake. All three of these are any 5532s. Uh, one is obviously for the op amp. One is probably buffering. The other one, I'm not sure. It might have to do with the switching for the different stages here. Uh, I'm not sure what the third one's doing here. We have two TO92 transistors here. One of them is the BS170 MOSFET for the uh, MOSFET gain stage. That's this one here. And the other one is a 5088, 2N5088 BJT MPN transistor. So you essentially have three separate gain pedals all built into one. And the associated components are built all around it. We also have some trim pots. These are presumably just adjusting trims or bias conditions for the transistors and the uh, op amp gain stage. So I'm assuming that these three are the actual uh, these are your actual audio circuit in here. Input and output quarter inch jacks are the uh, Switchcraft style enclosed plastic 112BX style input jacks. Again, the uh, non-switching DC jack. These are like the Lumberg style. And then down here is a little LED that's for the op amp. And then the other two are board mounted there and there. There's our LED. This lights up the acrylic bottom. Here, these did come with the pedal, so it's it's part of it. It's not like an aftermarket addition. And the potentiometers, hard to see under there, but they do appear to be alpha potentiometers. The pedal did come with a metal back plate here, uh, which makes sense because there are gonna be situations where you probably wanna have a fully enclosed pedal to reject as much interference as possible. Uh, the acrylic here did come with the pedal, at least all the ones I've seen have this with it. Uh, and you know, probably Dr. Scientist drilled out these holes specific for this. I'm guessing that I'm missing something because I don't really see how this all works together. Um, to explain, so this acrylic back here, uh, first off, like we see, it has the holes drilled. 
they're not super well lined up to the trim pots if i'm being honest i don't know if that's coming across in the video but they're they're not they're not very aligned i think you might actually still have to take the back door off or at least loosen it to align a screwdriver in to adjust these trim pots which okay fine but in addition to that if you want to use the metal back door like i said for more for extra shielding then presumably you would take off the acrylic and just pop the back door on. Uh, but there's a couple problems with that. Number one, the LED that lights up the acrylic, it actually sticks out proud of the back of the enclosure. And so the back door would hit it. If not for these two capacitors down here, they're actually keeping the lid from closing. They're too close to the edge. And so the little lip on the door here is hitting those capacitors. And so, okay, fine, maybe what you're supposed to do instead is sandwich the acrylic backing here in between the door and the enclosure, which is a normal, that you know, that's something that people did with these acrylics, is just put it in between. To that uh, end, the acrylic back plate here has a milled slot for this lip on the back door, like so. The problem is you have to turn the acrylic backing here 180 to do that, because this is the side with the slot. This lines up here, but now the little hole here for the LED no longer lines up with the LED, nor do the holes here line up, which you wouldn't be able to get to with the back door on anyway, but the LED is keeping the acrylic from sitting on there, which means you can't put the back door on. It feels like an oversight. I feel like I'm leaning on I'm missing something with the setup here. Uh, because this pedal seems otherwise really carefully laid out and prototyped as we saw. And this just feels like something that wouldn't have been overlooked to combine this functionality with putting this on here. The LED should have been more central or this drilled more centrally in order to allow these to go together. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm just missing something that it wasn't, this, this wasn't considered or put or um, actually tested. That or just move these two capacitors into the board somewhere so that you can actually just put the back door on and maybe socket this LED uh, so that you can take it out if you're not using the acrylic back. I'm not sure. Um, I did reach out to this, um, the tone god to see if I could get another back door so that maybe we can move this LED over and make it more central or maybe drill these holes a little bit better. Also, I wanted to point out for these acrylic doors, uh, just as a side note, if you're ever dealing with, uh, you know, building with one of these, the it's okay, obviously it's okay to use these, but these enclosure screws have a beveled head that fit into the bevels of the, the metal back door here, which is fine. Uh, but if you don't, if you use these same screws with this acrylic, you have to bevel the uh, holes for these screws as well because what's going to happen here is the little angles uh, from that bevel head is going to push out on the edges of this kind of thin plastic around here and it's just going to crack them so you have to you have to bevel the hole here for these acrylic lids if you're going to use these machine screws or make these holes smaller in the corner and use button head screws and then put like little rubber feet there so they're sticking up past the screw heads as it stands right now there isn't really a good solution besides just using the acrylic by itself with the screws here that just sit a little bit high. Like I said, I reached out to this Tone God uh, person to see if they happen to have any more of these acrylic backings that I could um, drill some new holes to make it flippable, but we'll see if that goes anywhere. All right, so that is the Dr. Scientist Heisenberg Molecular Overdrive. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, that was a teardown on the Dr. Scientist Heisenberg. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you wanna see on an upcoming teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching.